Hi there viewers, welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on Act Television Network. It's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday night between the hours of 8 to 9 where we bring you something relevant in the sporting uh, the industry in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are here tonight at the Coover Recreation Ground where we're going to be talking to members and the, the coach of the Club Sando football team, one of the newest team to enter the Pro League. So before we get into that topic, we want to say again a special good night to the rural communities. You know, Axe 25, we play a great part in rural communities where we go in and we highlight sports and sporting discipline and young sportsmen and women. So good night to all the rural uh, communities. And we're going to take a break and when we return, we're going to be chatting with members of the Club Sando right here in Kuva, uh, Central, as you say. And we have a couple Pro League teams. So. I would want to find out if it's going to be a third Pro League team coming out from this community. So stay tuned viewers, we're going to take a break, we'll be right back. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, competitive pricing, honest and reliable service. For over 50 years, we have been providing the ultimate shopping experience and after-sale care. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Vans first at Marabella and now open at Shukwanis, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. Welcome back to us. Welcome back to Scoreboard right here on Axe 25. And as I mentioned before, we are at the Kuva Recreation Ground where we, uh, if you notice behind me, they are members of the Club Sando, the Diamond Scaffolding Club Sando. They are in their practice session. And they will be the new kids on the block coming into the 2015-2016 Pro League season, which starts in September. And joining me here is the head coach, Anthony Strick. Anthony, it's a pleasure and welcome to Axe 25. Welcome, good night. Uh, you have come to Club Sando with a great reputation. Uh, being a coach at um, W Connection, one of the, I would say, the premier clubs in the Pro League, uh, Rangers. And uh, this is your second season here now with Club Sando. And we have seen since you, your introduction to Club Sando, we have seen this team, I mean, go from strength to strength. Um, Knock out um, uh, Super League champions, second in the league last year, uh, losing to W Connection 2-0 uh, in the 2 Eta Cup Classic. And uh, to me, that was a very good showing of a Super League team against a Pro League team. Um, tell us a bit about Anthony Street, the man, the coach. Well, first, Anthony Street is very humble. Humble. You know, come from Mova, uh, an area where you know Crime. Nothing that's good has come out of that. Yeah, well, you know, and, yeah. and always want to build something to show the youths back in Mova that, you know, crime is not all. You could do something for yourself to improve. Yeah. And that was my goal, you know, setting standards for the youths of Mova, no matter where I go, lead by example. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways where I lead by example. Yeah. So tell me a bit about your, your footballing career before we start to talk about the coaching aspect. Well, well. First, I went to school in Mova, Chinapu government, I represent Mova Primary School. Then I get selected for Port of Spain and Environs with Gwenwin Kuss and Arthur Jab Brown as head great coach. Players. Yeah, great, great players. players. And then I was the skipper of the Port of Spain and Enviro Environment team. Then I went on to the national youth team to play against Hugo Sanchez with both Neptune and Nevik Dinoon and all these guys. Mm. Then. From there, we get picked to go in army. Immediately, I went in defense force, joined defense force, play with defense force, where I get loads of experience with Ron Lafarre and Charlie Spooner and all these guys. So I come from a very, very, you know, football background era, as you should say. 
you know, came out, make the senior team, play with ECM Motong, skipper ECM Motong to the first ever FA. I was the first coach to shake Joe Havalanche and in Skinner Park after defeating Police 2-0 with ECM Motong as the skipper. Then I leave ECM in 1984 and joined Trintock for 10 years. Play with Trintock for 10 years, where was the prime of my football. Mm -hmm. You know, made the national senior team within Trintock and the rest was history. You know, Mr. Richard Braffitt, who died recently, DC's Braffitt, mm -hmm. gave me the first opportunity in 1992, I think, to go on a coaching course, 1990, sorry, mm -hmm. to go on my first coaching course with a, a guy named Roy Miller from Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm in the Hazley Crawford Stadium and from there I always knew I wanted to coach, you know, after playing. So after that you went straight to the connection or you were... No, after first? that I, I, I went Caroni. I coached Caroni first, you know, then I went back to ECM Motong, had a stint there, coached Flower Mill from North Zone, entered the, the semi-pro league, you know, at that time. And then I went Rangers because I went Jablute. With Terry Fenrick, the first year Terry Fenrick came, mm -hmm. spent four years at Rangers, at, at Jablute, yeah. and then left Terry, recommend me to Rangers, and then I went as head coach as Rangers for five seasons. And I and the owners, well, Rangers is a team close to my heart, yeah, yeah. you know, for development purpose. I, someday I will be back at Rangers, I must say that proudly. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, the rest is history, you know, when W Connection from Rangers, learned the final touch of my coaching from Mr. Stuart Charles where he was a teammate of mine at Trintock okay. but he have loads of experience and I want to thank Stuarty mm. and the W Connection family for giving me the final touch in my coaching mm. which right now we're progressing within Club Sandro. Now, how did the union with Club Sandro come about? Well, Club Sandro first, Club Sandro, I wouldn't say Club Sandro, Coover. A team from right here where we sit in mm. wanted to come in the Coover League yeah. and they wanted a coach because they told me they want to go into the Central Zone and then qualify for the Super League, mm -hmm. you know, and within we negotiating because I had W and I showing them to leave W and come and just coach a, a, a zone side, yeah, that yeah, is problems, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but then they come back with some nice news that, hey, instead of going through all of that, we meet Eddie Dean, Club Sando, and we think we might get in easier. Okay. And that is how it started. Mm -hmm. You know, finally, well, Eddie Dean and, and Marlon Zo meet and they come to a common understanding together with Tima McKnight. Mm -hmm. And they came back to me and I accept the, the job. Mm -hmm. I accept the job knowing that I come in to carry the team to the Pro League. If you're not on that, well, then I wouldn't be part of the squad. Yeah, and they give me that okay, but they wanted to go as champions. And last year, as you know, we run second, so they didn't want to go as second place. Yeah, so yeah. we give it a next shot and there we are today. Yeah, because the champions um, are. It, it, it is known by now that you all are the 2014 Super League champions. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Seven out of seven. Um, yeah. Which of the both seasons will you say was most rewarding for you? The last season or this present season? <laughs> well, to be honest, eh, to be honest, you know, I felt real great last season to see the guys, how they, they play the football, the intensity they play with, the discipline, you know what I mean, and the belief they have towards the football, you know. So last season, I think we did good, we did great because to run second by a protest, um, Guaya protest a game, we was out front and Guaya protest a game and get three free points by winning the protest and came and passed us by a point. We both had three games each and both of us win our three games, so them win by a point. You know, it was hurtful, but it was enjoying to know the kind of competitiveness within the Super League, you know. And I enjoyed that. And then meeting W Connection in the final, that was, that was, that was my biggest yes, dream, yeah, you know. Yeah. I always tell the guys, look, reaching this final is showing the Trinidad and Tobago how important oh, the squad, the depth of the squad club Sando is. And because we are aspiring to be pro league players, so let us market the club as from now. And the rest was history last year. Now, I, I looked at the team last year when they came up against W Connection. And it showed you that a Super League team, you know, is not far off in performance than a Pro League team. Because W Connection won the game 2 0, but that didn't tell you the true story true. The of game. the game. And it, you had to be there to actually see. And 
we're talking about W Connection, but we're not talking about the other pro league teams that you all had beaten yeah. along the way. Well, those teams was Police, Caledonia, Police and Caledonia. Yeah, I think those was the two teams before. But again, those teams are in the top level of yeah, football. Pro league, yeah. Right now, as you sit here to, tonight, you have to start to look at things differently because you all are moving from the semi-pro into the pro league. Now, I know that you have a lot of guys here who have pro league experience, but have you all started to put things in place and what are some of the, 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 the new initiatives you're going to be putting onto these players as we they look to start this league, this new football in September? Well, as we say, coming, coming from the early part of the season where we set our goals, because every season we set goals, you know, setting the goal was the Pro League because I said past us last year, we practicing and we getting ready for the Pro League. So the training you're going to get this season is not Super League training. I'm going to break you out now because I'm sure we're going to the Pro League. I wouldn't make the mistake we made last season and letting the rest of the teams be close to us. And in the first stage of the league, where the 15 teams play each other, is the eight teams going through. And I didn't care about second, third or fourth. I started to set my standards. I want first, first right through to send a message to the Pro League teams. And I think the way we train, the discipline we train with, because I come from the pro league teams under Terry Fenwick and Ricky Hill and these guys, and I don't slack with my training. Discipline is the key to success. Mm -hmm. So these guys will tell you that the discipline aspect of the team mm -hmm. is very, very high, very, very high. We do, we do laps with the discipline. Not even the attendance at training we just laps with. Mm -hmm. Most men just come out and train every night, mm -hmm. every night. So I think the goals we set for the, for the Pro League is very high. We're not going to, into the Pro League to, to run third or fourth or fifth or just to take part. Mm -hmm. We're going into the Pro League to try and win the Pro League. Yeah. It's a hard task, but that is the standards we set in because we don't want to be little the club. Mm -hmm. So the standards are the, the going into the Pro League is to come first. If by incident or anything we come second or third, we accept that. Yeah. You know, but we're going into the Pro League to try and stamp the authority. As I tell the guys, we have a product where we market in here. And the only way we could sell this product is if you, the individuals, market it proper. Now, the name Club Sando, people will associate the team from San Fernando. Yeah. Now, you all will be the third team in Central going into the, to the Pro League. Is there any way in the future we will see Club Sando coming to San Fernando or moving away from Central, anything like that? Well, well, as the owners, the owners is one from South, one from here. It's a, it's a merging okay. really went on, you know, Marlon Zoe, we had some of the players employed with him and then Eddie Dean had the franchise of the team, right. you know, and some of the players, we merged, we come together, mm -hmm. but training facilities was a problem. Yeah. You know, and some of the guys was working, so that is why we reach on, on Kuva Recreation Ground, mm. because it could affiliate the guys in the night. Okay. So we train from quarter past seven sometimes. I, as I tell the guys, sometimes I know it's hard for your wives and your girlfriends. Yeah. Every night, coach calling training, and I don't ease up with training. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the merging went on, and because of the ground conditions are uh, south and here, we only had the privilege to train here. Mm -hmm. So the team base really here, yeah. you know, but as a past Trintock player and a past player who, who, who was in South for long periods. You know, the, the club really based here, but I think it's more South-oriented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and as well as we would like to have a stadium to train in and to play our games, I think it might be Manny Ramjan mm. in the future because no team using Manny Ramjan at this particular time. Yeah, and they so, the yeah, so that is the stadium yeah. we might have to go in. Mm. But I wouldn't like to give up here because the people are, are Kuva. Mm. I think, thank you, he was with us throughout the season. I know it was sacrificing with the cricketers mm. to give in to the footballers, but I think they understand us. And I will openly like to thank all the people at are, are, are Kuva mm. for coming behind the team and sacrificing certain things, you know, mm. the ground conditions and things to make sure Club Sando 
do the best. Now, Club Sando has a base support. I mean, you have gone to Club Sando games, and I've seen down to little kids with their Club Sando t-shirts on, and they are vocal just as the adults. What sort of support base you all have, and is that going to be supporting you all into the into the pro league and do you see that growing in any way well first the support base is something extraordinary you know because these guys take the, the supporting more serious than the players and and that motivates me to keep the to drive the players because without support the football is nothing and i keep telling the players look the support it have no support in football people just refrain from going to football Right, I show them look plenty all you leave all your big club because all they didn't like what going on. We come together here to change football in Trinidad and Tobago. And every night we train I remind them that. I, tell, I let them know that hey, if we have to change football, you have to change yeah, yeah. your personal life, yeah, yeah. your personal input into the game. Yeah. You know, so every time we go to the dressing room, they want to know how coachman only talking about the supporters. Mm. And when we go out there, the supporters we have to please because we have to bring them out, mm. let one go and tell our next one and bring out our next one. So mm. I keep stressing that I don't leave out my support. No time, I, even training, we talk about the supporters because I think. They are very passionate, they are very serious with the team and they always cheer on the team and I think that was a big part of our success last season and this season, the supporters. I would like to thank them again, all the supporters, I would like to thank all you to keep doing a great job. Now, when I look at, I have been looking at the Pro League for a number of years and last year when I looked at Club Sandro and Guay in particular and saw Ato Bolan the type of tune out. Crowd, yeah. I can't recall any time going to a pro league game and seeing that sort of crowd support that I remember telling someone last year, you know, it could be nice if Club Sando and Guaya gets into the pro league. Because somewhere along the line, as you mentioned, the support in the pro league, which is our top level uh, football in the country, it has the support base is not growing. For some reason, people are, I don't know if it's people are disenchanted with football overall or the Pro League itself, but there seems to be nothing in the Pro League to generate and to bring supporters out. You might get a, a crowd if it's a Toyota Club a Finals or if it's something like that, but a normal league game. league game, you don't see anybody. And I think that that could be most disheartening because I think a player wants to be on the field and when he look, see the support in the stands? Well, I think many, many different things cause that. Many different things. As I just tell my players, as a past player, my village used to come and support me. Yeah. Because, you know, they used to correct me from the mistakes and they make me a player that I am. Yeah. You know, and I just tell the players that if you really market yourself and bring five people each from your village to see you, Collectively, we could have over 100 people. So first, you have to think about you, what you're doing, what you bring into the sport, yeah. and get serious. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now, that is why we support Berlin, because one of the players will bring his wife, she will go and tell her sister, she will bring her son next game, mm -hmm. she will tell her husband, and so that is four already, one man bringing, and you know, each player brings somebody to the game. But what I've noticed is that the Super League games, that is playing in communities always seem to draw a larger crowd than the pro league teams that are played in the stadium. Yeah, well, there are plenty to that. One is you don't have to pay. It's right in your backyard. You know what I mean? Then you're following the team from your community mm -hmm. because most of the time it's community oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, Club Sando, Club Sando supporters coming from all about Mova, Arima, anywhere a player is, you have a supporter coming to support Club Sando. And we have, the supporters have a kind of base that you have to join them, you have to be with them, you know, if you're with them and you buy a jersey, they take your name, they have your phone number, yeah. so everybody knowing each other, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in that context, you find more and more keep coming out, mm -hmm. and then the way how the team playing, 
because I'm offensive minded. Mm -hmm. I'm not a defensive coach, I'm a yeah. defender. Yeah. But I like offensive football because when I go to watch a game, I go to watch goals. Yeah. When yeah. it have no goals, it's boring for me. Yeah. So I coach offensive minded. I coach football for goals. Yes, but behind we have tactics. But the emphasis is to score goals and goals bring out the support. Now, as you're looking forward to the, the Pro League season, which starts in September, um, I'm sure that you already start to, to put your plans and things in place. Um, is there anything you want to share with us as to what we can expect uh, from Club Sando come the opening of the 2015-2016 league? All I can share with you right now, We'll be, leave the, leave the yet, right? we'll be coming with yeah. our force. We'll mm. be coming with our force. We'll mm. be coming to lighten up the Pro League. Mm. You know, because we know the people want to see who is this club and don't think if they could win seven out of seven like the Super League and this is not the Super League. Mm. But the training that we're doing here right now, it mm. will be double. Mm. It will be double and we're starting early. You know, we want to invite players, quality players to the team. You know, we want to handpick players. We don't want 2,000 people coming and join yeah, the club. Yeah, yeah, we want yeah. to handpick players because we know all the players in Trinidad. We're looking for more youth players because I think I have enough senior players on my yeah, team and yeah. the best senior players in the country, I have them already. You want to share some of the names? Well, we have, we have Tiba McKnight, you know, we have Kern Cupid, we have yeah. Kamani Rivers, yeah. we have Anthony Paris, we have Devon Modest, we have Charles Pollard, we have so much names and to call right now. Are, all these all guys are experienced, is experienced yeah, players. Yeah, yeah. Then we had the core youths, Ryan Fredericks, you know, we have the Humphrey and, and mm. Sicharan from the under 20 team. Okay. So we have a good mix here, you know, and I know more will come on board because mm. we're one of the teams with the, with, the, with the nice way of playing the game, yeah. you know, and the comfortable way of playing the game. There is few clubs in Trinidad and Tobago who play comfortable, tactical football. Yeah. And we is one of them clubs, you know? Yeah. And I think that is why we were so dominant in the Super League. But I'm saying to the teams in the Super League, don't give up, keep on top of things, keep focus, keep your discipline. And, and the sky is the limit, you know what I mean? Because what I did, you could do at any given time, but it's just seriousness. Before I let you go, what, what's your take on the present state of football in the country? Where do you see football is as present and what do you feel is needed to get this football going back to the, the days when football was entertaining? Well, one is few clubs, few clubs have the background, uh, uh, the sponsorship. Few clubs. The rest of clubs, plenty don't have sponsorship. So there is a big barrier within like the W Connection, the Central FCs and mm. these clubs together with the smaller community clubs. Yeah. And not until we could get level with these clubs, with the bigger clubs financially, then you will see the play people coming back out of football. That is one. Two, I just always blame the players. Stop complaining about the people who not come in if all they're not committed to the game. Yeah, yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So you get what you give. Yeah. What you put in, you're going to get out of it. Yeah. And if you put in seriousness, then the people are going to come out and support it because they're going to see that. Yeah. And that is the objective of Club Sando, and I'm not going to slack with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right? The seriousness of marketing yourself and marketing the club is very important because when the supporters come and they see good things, they're inviting other people. Yes, yes, and yes. By, by inviting other people, we could have 1,000, 1,500 people watching a game. Mm. And that is the among Club Sando looking to bring to our football game this year. Yeah. You know, we want to invite the people to our training sessions and let them see how serious we are. Yeah. And plenty of the clubs don't do that. You know, so I want to include that within my program, invite the people to come and, and see if it's a dollar sell, pay a dollar, mm -hmm. contribute a dollar, not pay, contribute a dollar towards the team. Towards the team. Mm -hmm. That will buy a case of water or two cases of water. So you watching your team train, yeah. you helping your team to yeah. progress yeah. in the right way because by you watching, you're motivating the guys. Yeah. To train harder. So we can expect some entertaining, good football come well, uh, September. Well, from Anthony Street, mm. you could expect that because all the people will know me, the public will know me, know I one way, discipline, entertaining football. Well, it was really a pleasure. Yeah, you and too. Let me wish you all the best as you get into the big boys um, uh, football, the, the big league, and I am sure that um, with the experience that you all got last year 
playing against the Pro League teams, um, you are not going in there as no underrated team. You're going in there, as you said, to win. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. So, all the best. So, it was our pleasure. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. So, yeah. though you heard it from the coach, the head coach of the Diamond Scaffolding Club Sando, they will be joining the new season, the 2015 2016 Pro League. And um, they are currently the 2015 Super League champions. And um, you heard it from the coach, quite confident, looking to bring something new into football. So you football fans who has been disenchanted with football, um, locked on to Club Sando, because you never know, they're going to be bringing something that's going to be entertaining to you. We're going to take a break and then we're going to be chatting with some more members of Club Sando. So stay tuned, we're looking at Scoreboard and at 25. Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Scoreboard right here on Act 25 and we are outdoor here at the Coover Recreation Ground. We are in the midst of a practice session here by the Club Sando team, as I said before, newly um, team to enter the Super, uh, the Pro League actually. They are the current Super League champions. We spoke earlier with the head coach and I have with me the manager of the team, Marlon Zou. Marlon, it's a pleasure to be talking with you. Thank you, man. And congratulations on uh, Club Sando victory in the Super League and also the many achievements that you have gotten uh, along the way. Last year you were the knockout Super League champions. Now, Club Sando, a lot of us were looking at Club Sando last year, with the performance last year and saying, wait, this team had to go into the Pro League. For many reasons, for the way you all played against the Pro League teams in the Toyota Classic and also the type of support base that comes with Club Sando. Team. Um, Outside of Club Sando, Gua is the only team that really brings that sort of support. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you all, are going, all have decided to go into the, the Pro League 2015. Now, as a manager, as you sit here and you reflect on how long have you been in Club Sando? Well, actually, I have been in Club Sando for two years. Two years. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. when you reflect now on the two years, how has been managing the club and the success and all that the club has brought. How do you feel here now knowing that you all have reached the point now where you won the league and you all are going into which is the highest level of football in the Pro League? Right. From, from the start, right? I always had a goal to go into the Pro League. But my goal is, is actually not the Pro League. My goal is to go further than the Pro League actually playing club champion football and that is my goal for Club Sando right now. I, I, I given the team at least three years to win the, the Pro League mm -hmm. and playing the club champions. That is Club Sando direct goal mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. at present. Uh, managing this team, is it a difficult team? Is it something that you enjoy doing? What are some of the well, actually, it's something that I enjoy doing because most of the, the players work with, with my company. Okay. So we have a close relationship. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So you are so, the, the, you are the yeah. off the football field, yeah. you are the boss. Yeah, so yeah. it's actually, I, I just be with them 24 Every day they work with us, yeah. with me, with and my company, yeah. and from there we train. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a well knit family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is good too is that, I mean, he, mm -hmm. you work with these guys, and when they come out here any night, you yeah. come out with them. Right? Yeah, yeah. I there's been every training session. Right. Um, yeah. Looking at the club presently, mm -hmm. um, what would you say is the main recipe that has grown Club Sando into one of the, I would say, one of the top clubs in Trinidad and Tobago? Because I have I saw you all play against pro league teams. I saw you all last year in the Super League. Mm. And you all bring a different style, you know, something different to football. What has made you all so different from the rest? I, I guess it's the desire to win. The, the group of players that I form, some of them play in the Pro League, and everybody have the desire to win. That, that, that's what motivates Club Sando most of all. What, what are your, 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 your expectations going into the, 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 the Pro League? Well, for the first season, I 
want to be bold. I actually want to be in the first three for the first season. Mm. And I have a plan and I'm given clubs under three years to win the Pro League mm. and, and play in the club champions. Before I let you go, anything you would like to share with the public uh, about Club Sando? Just that Club Sando is a, a passionate community-based team and it's just excitement to win this day in day out. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with Club Sando. Thank you very much and let me wish you and the team all the best. Thanks. Uh, there you heard it from the manager of Club Sando, Marlon Zou, giving us his input into the, what has happened over the past two years being the manager and what he's looking for and he has dreams and we know that dreams come true and we are expecting great things from Club Sando. So we're going to take another break and we're going to be talking to somebody else, maybe the technical director or some of the other players. So stay tuned. Remember you're looking at Scoreboard on Axe 25. Welcome back to Scoreboard here right here on Axe 25. Uh, joining me is Kuhn Cupid, one of the players uh, from the Club Sando outfit and one with tremendous experience, formerly of W Connection. Yes, correct. And uh, coming to this team uh, has brought a lot, a lot of experience here to this to this um, Super League team, which has reached the point now where they no longer uh, wants to compete in the Super League, but going into the Pro League. Good, it's a pleasure. Yes. And welcome to Ask 25. Um, how long have you been with, 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 with Club Sando? I've been with Club Sando since um, 2013. 2013. Yes. Now, how has that been for you in Club Sando, coming from the professional, you know, to a Super League team? What have you brought um, from the professional team to this team? Well, as you said before, um, my wealth of experience, mm. playing at the international level, nationally, and on CONCACAF level. Mm -hmm. um, the transition has been easy, and alongside our quality coaches, Mr. Street, mm. it has been very easy. Mm. And playing alongside teammates that have played with our clubs before at Derby Connection mm -hmm. and other teams as well. So it, 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 it wasn't that hard for me. How long have you been with Derby Connection? Um, since 2000. That's a long time. Yes, That's 2000, 2013. Yeah. Well, tell me a bit about some of the, 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 um, the matches where, 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 where football took you uh, with Derby well, Connection. Well, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I have to thank Dobby Connection for all the years of service that um, I paid to them mm -hmm. because without them, I would have been able to play international football. Mm -hmm. I played football at the CONCACAF level as well mm -hmm. with Dobby Connection. We won CFU twice. Mm -hmm. We won the Pro League. Well, in my years playing with Dobby Connection, I won the Pro League twice with them, 2005 mm -hmm. and 2012. Mm -hmm. And we played every competition. That there was throughout the Pro League, we won every competition. There is the one to win, sorry, and um, it's been a great experience. Well, we know that um, our Dawson Lee W Connection is one of the the most, um, how, how, what word should I use, most accomplished and correct team that has won major and numerous titles. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. And uh, they have played, you know, in major competitions and they really have kept that standard. Yeah. Now, you have come over now to Club Sando. You all have qualified now to enter into the Pro League. Mm -hmm. How do you see this present bunch of players performing at that level? And I know that the team is popular with a lot of experienced players, yeah. but you all have young players too. Yes. What sort of team is Club Sando right now going into the Pro League? Well, we are a very ambitious club, mm. right? Um, the club has been in existence. I think this June would be 25 years in existence. So mm. the team has been around, the club has been around. Mm. And we have an ambitious owner. We have a director at the club that's very ambitious as well. We have a coach in Anthony Street that's been through it all. Mm. He's been at St. Andrew as a head coach for many years. Mm. He came to us, um, I believe in 2012. And ever since that, mm. he has pushed us to the limit every single time, every single training session, mm -hmm. he's tried to, to preach a professional mindset in mm -hmm. everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Because he's not just preparing us to win the Super League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From day one, he was always preparing us yeah, to yeah, play yeah. at the Pro League yeah, level yeah, yeah. and even CONCACAF. Mm -hmm. Because that is where we set our sights right now as a club. Mm -hmm. Alongside the players that have been there as well, going into the Pro League, I believe the transition will be very easy for us. Mm -hmm. Just now, 
for us now to go in and apply ourselves mm -hmm. and play the type of football that we've been playing throughout the Super League. We played pro league competitions and we've competed well enough. I believe we could have done a lot better by our standards, but we know we need to make that step and I don't believe it would be that hard. Now, with the experience that you have gathered from the pro league, um, there might be some areas that right now might be areas where you feel that more work is needed yeah, to be done. Yeah. What areas um, you feel that, 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 that there is? Because there is going to be a. No, although you. I, I saw you all play last year against some of the, the pro league teams. Right. And you all played football. There was no. There wasn't anything to say, well, that's a super league team or that's a pro league team. The matches were even. Even yeah. the game against the Connection that you all lost 2 0. Sure. But you would know that India. It's a different type of football is going to be played. Yeah. What are some of the areas that you think that special attention is needed? Well, I honestly believe we're going into the Pro League. We don't have a big squad. And we obviously need to add a little more quality to the squad mm. in every area. Mm. Because com competition in every position is very important in any team at whatever level. Mm. Right? Financially, I believe that we should be able to push to get a lot more experienced players, a lot more quality players. And we're also looking at youth as well. Yeah. yeah. Because... We have two quality national players as well in our squad in Akim Humphrey and um and um Oh yes, yes, yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. So we have two under twenty players. So we are also looking at you because we're looking towards the future. Mm -hmm. So if we could have more quality players, quality younger players in each position, I believe we should be able to compete for years to come. Mm -hmm. I'm excited going back into the very league. excited and I'm very excited being a part of the Club Sando yeah. franchise because I'll be honest, it is a franchise that any player would like to be a part of. We have a family atmosphere, the, the owners, the coach, everybody makes every new player very comfortable. What makes Club Sando so special? Because I'm listening, <laughs> I spoke to the, the coach, I spoke to the manager, specifically you know, there is something, you get the feeling that there is something different in this team. What makes this team so, so special and so, you know, eager to, uh, to, to, to show the public that you all are just not a Super League team but a force to be reckoned with? Well, I'll show you so it for yourself, right? Yeah. The Guaya Club Sando final season yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were outnumbered yeah. maybe, what, a million to one? Yeah, yeah. As I told somebody um, in that game, right. I, I say like it's a... Um, uh, ILP meeting because well, it was only green. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. if you were present at that game, yeah. our little band of supporters, our little band of loyal supporters, yeah. Yeah. they shouted for the entire match. And is that what has been driving us? Yeah. Because with, I, I don't believe any club, any team, wouldn't be a team without the supporters because you need to have people supporting and we need to bring support back to the Pro League as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe yeah. Club Sando will bring that yeah. to the Pro League. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that we have diehard loyal supporters that have been through to take and ten with us. I see really supporters. We have wrong so with jerseys on and we, you're hearing their voice. We invest in the future. Yeah, yeah. At all levels. Yeah. At all levels we invest in the future. Yeah, so yeah. it's really fun and mm. the supporters are a part of the club. Mm. They are part of every event, they are part of every contribution mm. that mm. Club Sando is going to bring to the mm. Pro League. Mm. And I believe once we keep Bring in more on board. Mm. I believe sky is the limit for Club Sando. Okay. It was a pleasure. Same. And you know that I could be falling earlier a little bit more often now because in the Pro League, mm -hmm. you have a better um, fi uh, position of fixed years than, right. than the Super League because you know how the games are played. Yeah. So I want to wish you the best and the team. And I know that um, from what I saw last year yeah. and from the words of the coach, I know that you are going to go there to perform. Thanks a lot. Thanks again. Yeah, man. So there you have it from Kern Cupid, another player from the Club Sando team. And we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. What's the score? One and a half 25. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, competitive pricing, honest and reliable service. 
For over 50 years, we have been providing the ultimate shopping experience and after-sale care. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Vans first at Marabella and now open at Shukwanis, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. Welcome back to Scoreboard here at 25. Uh, we have the captain of Club Sunday, Tiba McKnight, here with us. Uh, Tiba, good night. It's a pleasure to be chatting with you. Um, club Sando, um what have you new club going into the Pro League? Um, how long have you been with Club Sando? Because I'm hearing this name from... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've been with Club Sando for the, um, the last two seasons. Okay. Yeah, most notably last season more was more involved uh, last season. Uh, this is not a short break. I uh, had to go away and uh, educate myself a little more in the game uh, mm. from a coaching standpoint, as yeah. well as from a player standpoint as well, because it, it definitely helped getting that knowledge while still playing. So I took the opportunity. Tell me a bit about the the assistant before we get into the club side. Um, well, it, I've been I played in America as well as I went to school there. Mm. So I definitely had some uh, contacts there and. Uh, I was always keen on going back and, and put in the knowledge of the game mm -hmm. in terms of the, um, the USSF courses and, and stuff that they offer. So every time I get the opportunity, um, in whatever department I do it, I, I actually went and did a, my, the, first, the first level of goalkeeping um, coaching in this past summer, as well as my um, sea license. Now, you have been with Club Sandro for two years. You are the Super League knockout champions, second in the league last year. Now you all have won the, 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 this, this season's uh, Super League going into the, to the Pro League. What is your whole uh, expectation of this team entering the Pro League? Um, well, from my um, experience outside as well as locally, uh, when I first get involved, I try to depart whatever knowledge I, I think might be helpful to the team. And one of the things we're really trying to do is really to replicate international standards for football. Mm. And uh, as far as uh, taking the fans more serious than, I don't want to bash the other clubs, but we want to be more serious concerning fans because I think, as we know around the world, fans is what really keep football going yeah. From, yeah. from all areas, from higher players and mm. coaches and, mm. and even keeping the club afloat. Mm. So our expectation really is, is to go in the pro league and to win. Because at, at, our, at our age, we have a lot of experienced players and you know, we're trying to do things that could uh, make a brighter future for the, for the younger guys coming behind us. So we definitely have, have big, big expectations going into the, into the, uh, the Pro League this year. We want to go as far as the CONCACAF Championship. And two, two seasons, one season, you know, we're really trying to aim, you know, sky's yeah. the limit. Yeah. Um, going into the Pro League team, uh, the Pro League season actually, um, Support base is, uh, it, it plays a great part in mm -hmm. football. Um, we can see from time to time going to a pro league game, there is nobody at the stadium. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest cause we saw outside of international games was last year when Yon and Choir yeah. yeah. were in the Toyota Club Classic, mm -hmm. um, the finals against the Connection. Yeah. Um, do you think that by Club Sando getting into the pro league, will assist, the, will help the other clubs to maybe emulate from you all and try to get a fan base because Definitely. there is no fan base for certain teams mm -hmm. in the Pro League. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to call teams, but yeah. there are teams that come to the Pro League for matches and there is no support no base support. whatsoever, right? And we are not seeing crowds coming to football as before. Um. For clubs, I know. I mean, as I said I, I have my degree in, in the management field, mm. in sports and business. And the knowledge that I, I have, I definitely understand the importance of fans. And at, I'm not sure what is the other club criteria as far as the marketing and promotion schemes. Mm. But for us, the fans is, is more important than the players right now because mm. we we looking to really get fans at the game because obviously we need financial support. Mm. And if we could have a thousand fans at each game at twenty dollars. Mm. It could 
definitely help in some department, yeah. you know, in terms of turning over mm. bills and stuff. But we, we try to do a, a, a lot of, you know, little initiative as a Super League team, we mm. form a fan club committee, you know. Mm. Must pay a lot of respect to them as well because, you know, they, from day one when, when, we, when we came out, well, as I say, from when we came out, they definitely give us that support. Yeah. Travel anywhere we go, Tobago, mm. you know, uh, all the games, maxis and stuff, you know. So definitely have to pay that respect and, 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 and give credit to, to the fan clubs and, and the people buying into what we're trying to do. And our hope is just like it, it can only go from there, you know. Have you set any goals for yourself in, 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 in football, you know, before you retire? Um, currently, my, my initial goal is to go into the Pro League this year mm. and win the Pro League. Yeah. Uh, for me, when I play football, everything is about scoring goals. Yeah. Uh, last year I scored numerous amount of goals and we didn't win the league. Yeah. This year I, I contributed coming on in the last, later half of the season and we won the league. So I always mention to the players, if I could score one goal yeah. and we win the league, I think I'm more satisfied with that yeah. because the picture is bigger than me scoring goals. But Every time I take the field, I why, that is why I know. That is why I want to do score goals. So for, for we really, for me really, it's to win the league, take the team to the CONCACAF Champions League, as well as establish or replicate maybe 5% of the international standards in four clubs and as far as fun is concerned. Tiva, it was a pleasure. And I wish you all the best as you go along your journey. Yes, man. Thanks a lot. Well, there you heard it from the captain of Club Sando, Tiva McKnight, giving us his insight as to what we expect going into the new season in the Pro League. We're going to take our final break and when we return, we're going to be talking to, I think, most likely the technical director of this um, football team. So stay tuned. Remember, this is Scoreboard right here on Axe 25. Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Scoreboard here on Axe 25. Uh, we are outdoor actually here at the Kuva Recreation Ground, the training facility of Club Sando. And as you, if you are now joining us, we are talking to members of Club Sando. As you know, they have um, recently made the announcement that they will be entering the Pro League come the 2015-2016 season. We have spoken to a couple of the players and also the coach. Um, joining me here now is the technical director of this team, the man who I think um, plans for the team will have to step up because they are going into uh, to, to the top level of, of football. But I know he's capable and we saw what they did last year when they came up against some of the Pro League teams. So um, I don't think his job is going to be that difficult this year. But let me welcome Mohamed Issa. Uh, Mohamed, it's a pleasure and welcome to Axe 25. Thank you very much, my pleasure and good night. Finally, um, for those of us who were hoping last year that Club Sando, after the stolen performance against um, W Connection, uh, I think it was Police and Caledonia in the run-up to the Defence Force. Defence Force in the run-up to the uh, Toyota the Classic. Classic. And the type of crowd we saw this team bringing, we were of the opinion, okay, the clubs are not ready for the Pro League, but we were disappointed. This year, Club Sando, very secretly, because there isn't much fanfare, you all are the 2015 Super League champions. And you all have decided, now is the time to get into the Pro League. Is it that you all wanted to go into the Pro League as champions in the Super League, that you all have decided now and not last year? Yes, you're correct. Uh, when the, we formed our board in... Uh, a management in 2013 and when we sat down at the board meeting one of the board members was saying hey fellas listen to know 25th uh, next two years is 25 years mm. and at that meeting we decided that at, after at 25 years in football we feel that we should be playing at the highest level whatever the highest level of football in the country mm. we, we should be playing and then we say the TT Pro League is it mm. and, and, and that's what we were aiming for so although we had a big set of fanfare 2013 um, 2014 season we were really planning for 2015 for the, the, the Pro League mm. and we was able to put an incentive mm. to the team okay win, right. the Super win the Super League we will go to the be that time they go to the poly. Mm. It was that sort of incentive mm. that was given uh, was given to the team. Mm. 
and the management were behind the scenes putting everything else mm. in place. We, you know, we always felt that um, we wanted to go in there as champions and not probably buy our way inside it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the Kyle Eric the team, you are the person responsible now for really getting this team, you know, up to scratch, you know, to enter the Pro League. Because um, I'm sure that when you sit, uh, although we look at the brilliant performance last year, I am sure that there are areas of concern, you know, that areas where you, you think that a lot of work is needed because we're going into the top level of, of, of football. Uh, definitely, you know, as everybody else, you know, we have our strengths and uh, we have our weaknesses. And since the end of the Super League, we have sat down and decided where are some of the weaknesses in our team are and what we need to do to bring it up to the top level. Mm. Now, looking back at the success uh, with this team, which is over 25 years old, as you recall, um, what do you see as the main reason why this team has stayed together, you know, this club Sando organization has stayed together for this number of years? Because I think that 25 years is, is a milestone for any, you know, team to stay together and not, you know, fall apart and start back over. But you all have constantly been, you know, Operating. Um, the main person behind it is the owner, Eddie Dean. Mm -hmm. Eddie Dean has invested a, a, a lot uh, into, into Club Sandy. Mm -hmm. And he has always worked with um, Derek Lange, has been there when I joined Club Sandy. It was Eddie Dean and, and, and Derek Lange. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all three started to work together. And then the organizers board with Marlon Zoo and Steve Gopi Singh. Mm -hmm. And they started to put a, a real structured organization in place mm -hmm. and I think that's in the last three years mm -hmm. that was the progression of the of the club. As the director of the team, um, what will your plans be going into the full season? What at the end of the full season what would you as the director would you like to accomplish? <coughs> we honestly, me, I would like to finish in the top half of the league. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to win one of the knockouts. Yeah. You know, that'll be a very good achievement for me. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to concern is that when we play at the Super League level, we are playing a good brand of football. And I hope that when we go to the, the TT Pro League, yeah. we could maintain that, that brand of football. Yeah. I think we want to encourage people to come to football. That's what the coach wants. Yeah. Bring the people back to the football and they'll only come if you're playing good football. That's that track. I know that you have a lot of experienced players on the team, but who are some of the players that you will be looking at to really carry the team in the Pro League, if it's just for the full season, to give the younger players that sense of, of support? Well, um, you know, one, I could single out the, the goalkeeper. He had a very fantastic. Um, 2014, 2015 season, mm -hmm. and you have seen up players like uh, Kern Cupid, the Rivers, mm -hmm. um, Anthony Paris by now is uh, a senior player. He should be focusing now on uh, getting into the, into the national team. Yeah. Um, you have Devon Mothers, um, you have people like Kevin Neves, yeah. with one, a couple other players. In, that, in, um, Atiba McKnight is one of our senior players. Yes, yes. Anything you would like to share with the public before we end? Uh, I, I just want to say thanks to uh, the, 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 the board of directors at, uh, at Club Sando. This is the opportunity to thank the coach himself, our, our job uh, well done. Uh, the players for a good uh, high level of performance right for the season and all our supporters for 2014 2015 football season and we look forward to them for the same support and enthusiasm when we go to the TT Pro League. It's been a pleasure. Let me congratulate you and the management and staff of Club Sando. We have seen over the last couple of years some entertaining football from this team and we know that they will continue bringing that sort of entertainment to football which we are desperately lacking right now in our Pro League. And most of all, we know that we are sure to see 
uh, could support this as a pro league game once Club Sunday is, is playing because you'll have that support. Definitely, we have a good, a good organized fan base. Yeah. But there you heard it from Mohamed Issa, the technical director of uh, Diamond Scaffolding Club Sando. Now, for those of you all who have been disenchanted with football, I urge you to be patient because come the new Pro League season in 2015 in September, you will see a, a, a team, Club Sando, emerging and bringing a style of football that will be entertaining for you, the viewers. And we hope that you all can come out and support this, this, this team. This team already has a, 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 a huge uh, support base and coming to their games is entertainment, it's fun, it, it's exciting football. So I ask you football supporters, look out for the new season, come out and support Club Sando. I hope that we can see them you know, playing some of their games in San Fernando. As the name suggests, Club Sando, uh, we would like to see them in San Fernando, but they have established a training venue in Coover. Nevertheless, what we are concerned about is supporting Club Sando and uh, allowing them to bring the style that we have seen in the Super League to the Pro League. Remember, this is Scoreboard here at 25. We hope that you enjoyed our coverage tonight here from the Coover Recreation Ground. We will have a repeat of this program tomorrow at 12 noon. So keep viewing Acts 25. Look out for our Legends in Sports and our football action at 10 o'clock. So look out for us next week. Same station, same channel, Acts 25.